Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Happy Friday. It's December 4th. Thanks for joining us today. About 21 days till Christmas, but no one's counting, right? <laughs> I think we all are counting. Does it seem like it's getting harder to shop for folks? Uh, and they're, you know, you ask people, hey, well, I need gift ideas. Mm -hmm. Like I've been asking my family now for weeks, seems like months. I need ideas, need ideas. And people forget or they're like, well, just get me gift cards. Right. Or that I'll, I'll get back to you later. I'll and get back you, to you. And and you don't they, hear from them. And they never do. But we have some top 10 gifts that people actually want this year. We are here to help. That's right. We have a top 10 list and we'll get to that in just a moment. But the average American this year, they're going to spend a $322.65 on holiday gifts for six different people on average. All right. So here's what folks really, really want. According to this new survey, 52% actually want gift cards. There's no shame in that. They'll go get what they really, really want. That's true, and you don't have to worry about exchanging there. Exactly. And clothing is uh, next on the list at 40%. 37% actually want some household items. And fashion accessories uh, coming in at 33%. 28% mm -hmm. would like things to go with their iPhone or Android or whatever phone they're using. Smartphone accessories are a hot item. And 26% for computer accessories. I'm surprised that's not higher on the list with the pandemic. Me too. Also on the list, and you might be surprised by this, 24% of uh, people would love to get something related to food or drink, especially millennials. The article we're basing this on from studyfinds.org says they are the foodie generation. <laughs> so they're they're totally fine with you getting like uh, maybe send them like a, a box of cookies, box of cookies, yeah. jelly of the month club. Yeah, things like <laughs> big, that. Big, 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 big box of meat, maybe. Yeah, you can win. You can win, win, win if you send food, I think. And I think it's become easier to send food with the pandemic. It has. Uh, so there's an idea right there. All right. And then books are on the list at 22 percent. And exercise equipment is 20%. And 10% is other. other. And we don't know what the other is, but... Hmm. That's, Diamond ring? I don't know. <laughs> Stuff right. we... Stuff that will not, uh, that, that can't be bought for $322. No, no, of course not. Let's look at today's night at nine. Thursday marked the darkest day of the pandemic in the U.S. today. More than 210,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported and at least 2,800 Americans died in just a 24-hour period. President-elect Joe Biden says he'll urge everyone to wear masks during the first 100 days of his presidency. Just 100 days to mask, not forever, 100 days. And I think we'll see a significant reduction. Vice President Mike Pence expected to visit CDC headquarters in Atlanta today. He'll be briefed on the COVID-19 vaccine progress. The Medina County Sheriff's Office is investigating after deputies found the body of 16-year-old shooting victim in a field just outside of Castroville city limits. So far, no arrests have been made in the case. Powerful winds have pushed flames through Southern California as out of control wildfires burn near homes, forcing people to flee. Fire started at a house in Orange County and quickly spread to dry vegetation nearby. Houston police have rescued nearly 30 people from a suspected human smuggling operation. Investigators say the victims came from Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador and Cuba and had been held against their will for up to seven days. House of Representatives is set to vote on marijuana legalization at the federal level today. The measure would remove marijuana from the federal list of controlled substances list and expunge some marijuana related criminal records. President Donald Trump's presidential campaign has raised more than $207 million since Election Day. Some of the funds will go toward the president's legal fights over the certification of election results, while the rest is expected to go to a pact established by President Donald Trump. Warner Brothers says it'll release all of its 2021 movies on HBO Max the same day they debut in theaters. The films include Suicide Squad, Dune, and The Matrix 4. And that is today's Nine at Nine. So I think one of the top Googled items today is how much does HBO Max cost per month because of that full the slate movies. of movies coming yes. out. I was really looking forward to Dune coming out. The answer is I think it's $14.99 a month for the basic plan. And that's uh, kind of worth it. I mm -hmm. mean, it, I mean, if you're not going out to the movie theater anymore, right. you can stay Get at home. Get those first run movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's more than one. 
And we're thinking, of course, this could be a big game changer for the studios and for theaters. Yeah, so things might be changing there unless people are able to get into theaters sooner. Right. Yeah. And Matrix 4, can you believe it? <laughs> no, I'm, I need to see that preview. I haven't seen it yet. I don't remember seeing two or three. Hmm. 903 right now. Let's go outside with good. live cam. And Justin is out. That means Katie Blake is in. Good morning. Morning. Hey, good morning. Nice and cold out there. Another cold start for us today. We're up to 41. Uh, 41 now at the airport. There we go. I haven't been in the weather center since we put our tree up. I love it so much. We'll start you off with the pollen count for today. So we had a low count of mountain cedar yesterday. It has fallen out of the pollen count today. So we're left with just mold uh, and it is low today. Uh, so that is good news heading into the weekend. After school will be in the low 60s. So warming up 20 degrees from where we are now, but overall it will be staying cool all day today. Winds becoming light by this afternoon at just five miles per hour. That's good news for our high school football games later this evening. We'll take a look at that forecast. Get you ready for the weekend ahead coming up in just a bit. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Katie. Taking a look out with Trans Guide this morning. There's Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Things are running smoothly, but a lot of people look like they're headed to work this Friday morning. And top stories we're following today. Some would-be burglars are empty-handed after police say their plans to break into an ATM on the city's northwest side failed. Now, it happened outside the IBC Bank at the corner of Callahan and Babcock around 4 this morning. Officers found a chain still attached to the damaged ATM. They also found a white pickup nearby, which investigators say was stolen and was being used by the suspects to try to steal the ATM. Police tell us the suspects managed to yank open part of the outer case, but they did not get to any of the cash. Investigators are hoping surveillance video of the parking lot will help them find the burglars. We are still this morning waiting to learn the name of a 16 year old boy whose body was found just outside the Castroville city limits. The Medina County Sheriff's Office is expected to provide an update on the case later today. Deputies say they found the body in a field off Lower Lacoste Road after receiving a call for a shooting around 9 on Wednesday night. Investigators believe the teen lived nearby. Right now, the Sheriff's Office is still investigating and the shooting uh, and details are limited. Once we have more information, we will pass it along both on air and online. And it's an event for veterans who need to begin the process of filing for their Veterans Administration disability claims. The Bear County Military and Veterans Services Center hosting a D-Day Document Day. It's happening at the office at 1422 East Grayson Street from now until 1 o'clock this afternoon. Veterans will be able to file their records on the spot to facilitate processing. Veterans need to bring the following documents, DD-214 or equivalent listings of service-connected disabilities, dates and locations of medical treatments received, and medical records. And to minimize the risk of COVID-19, everyone will be required to wear a mask and stay in their vehicles during their visit. In your other morning headlines, a small plane makes its own landing strip and a store in New York has become a favorite, not necessarily of shoppers, but robbers. A collapsing telescope and finally another bear story. <laughs> Our David Sears is here. Hey, finally another <laughs> bear story. Been a while. We've been yeah. waiting, yeah. but we've got one for you. This is not the usual kind of bear story we do. A little different bear story. Okay. All right, but first we're going to start with the jobs report. It is out for November. Not what people were hoping for, but still a pretty positive number when you consider an increase in coronavirus cases across the country and has caused hiring to slow down. 245,000 jobs were created last month. That is the lowest number since April. Even back in October, there were over 610,000 jobs added. The unemployment rate has dropped now down to 6.7%. All right, keep your eyes open right here, right there. That is an airplane. That's a highway. Cars, cars. Look at that. And the wing is going to clip this SUV right here. They'll crash to this, to the right side, and then they'll end up on that median barrier right there. This is just unbelievable. Plane ends up on that barrier, and you can see, we'll show you, here it is again. We'll show you the picture of it. There's the SUV, and there's the plane set up on that little concrete wall. These are pictures from another driver, Janelle Harwell, who was one of the ones in the cars that was right behind that plane when it landed. She ran up to check on the pilot and the passenger and the driver in the car. And believe it or not, everybody walked away. The pilot and the passenger in the plane, okay, there they are right there. The driver in that SUV, also okay, just a little shaken up. The plane and the vehicle pretty much destroyed. Harwell got a chance to talk to the pilot, too. He said, yeah, we got up in the air and my, my engines just failed. My engine completely failed on me. And I had to go down wherever 
it was safest to go down. He tried so hard not to hit the woman in the SUV. Like he just, that was his main thing was trying to avoid a car. And so when he hit her, he was pretty distraught because he just didn't want to hurt anybody. Still incredible pictures to watch. The pilot happens to be a seasoned veteran. Craig Gifford is a part of an international aerobatic flight team and is the standard the FAA is investigating. All right, you're looking at surveillance video of a man coming into a convenience store in New York City. He pulls a gun out right there and he's going to rob the place. Apparently there's two robbers. This is the other guy who has to jump over the owner's daughter, a five year old. He grabs a whole drawer from the register, about 700 bucks, and makes his way out the door. But when the other guy in the gray sweatshirt tries to go away, the woman grabs a hold of him. This is 50 year old mom is grabbing a hold of that guy and holds on, trying to get that mask off of him so she could see his face. But that didn't work. She ended up being shut out the door. Now, this is uh, from earlier in the week. That guy was just leaning through that barrier and uh, leaning in there and grabbing that cash at the cash register. He's a little sloppy though. Some of the money was falling out of his pocket. But anyway, this woman is hoping somebody can help identify this guy. So the police there in New York City. All right, now you're watching one of the most powerful telescopes in the world collapse. There's a telescope that's in Puerto Rico. Look at that thing. Boom, it's all falling apart. The support cables were snapping the whole thing coming down. There is also drone footage from the platform. Here it is. That caught the collapse. Another view of those support cables just popping. All three support towers broke off that caused the 900 ton platform to come crashing down onto that dish. No one hurt. The telescope was in use for 57 years, but I guess this is kind of good news. The National Science Foundation has already announced it was going to decommission that telescope because it stained irreparable damage earlier this year. So I guess all it's not lost. And we'll end with another wild animal story. Here you go. Literally, this is a Christmas tree, and that is a koala bear hanging out in the tree. Apparently, the little girl broke into the house and then climbed into the tree and kind of liked it. The woman who owns the house came home, found the koala bear looking like an ornament. She called the rescue organization that helps with these sort of things. But at first, they thought it was a prank. They finally showed up, and now the koala is living in a tree outside the house. How adorable. Isn't that nice? Looks like a stuffed animal I like know. most koalas do. Like it's supposed to be there, like a yeah. Christmas decoration. I was going to say like a gift for some child coming in. <laughs> but well, no. Uh-oh, that would, yeah, that would not be good. David, did that big radio telescope look familiar to you at all? Because we found it the other day. It was actually in a couple of movies. It was in the Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie Goldeneye. Uh, and it was in the sci-fi film Contact with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. Oh, well, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Yep, it well, was. Maybe they all put it in a movie where it's collapsing. I don't know, right? That's sequels. Mm -hmm. That's what sequels are for. That's what they are. Next yep. time. All right. Thank you, David. Right now it's 910, 41 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. If the year 2020 was a per person, you might find love with Satan. There you go. There's a picture. That's the implication of a new ad for Match.com that's going viral. You don't want to miss this hilarious story. We're winding down what's been one of the most unique high school football seasons in history. RJ has a preview of this weekend's games from high school all the way to the pros. When I say ballet, what comes to mind? Is it the Nutcracker, those sugar plum fairies? Well, although a lot of events have been canceled due to the pandemic, dancing, those cherished holiday performances are still on the calendar. Just ahead on GMSA at 9, how the Ballet Conservatory of South Texas is spreading holiday cheer. And taking a look at stocks this morning, the Dow is up 92 points. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 915. The holiday performances at the Ballet Conservatory of South Texas are on point. The nonprofit Dance Academy and Performance Company have found a way to carry on during the pandemic. Alicia Beretta dropped in on an early morning class to see how the senior company is doing things differently and safely this year. Welcome to the Ballet Conservatory of South Texas. With a few new additions to their routines, the senior company ballerinas are back in studio. But Cody Lane George and Isabella Arce are proof that their workout regimen and the expectations are just as intense. Well, it's all different because of the masks and the distancing and how many people we're allowed to have at a time. It's taken time and a lot of practice, but the dancers are now able to catch their breath even with a mask on. 
an added skill that will allow for them to carry on the conservatory's mission to dance for the community amid the pandemic. I think for our dancers, it's it's not normal unless we are performing and making that connection. I mean, we are the ballet school for the community. The costumes are ready and the 40 people who make up the company have a packed schedule, keeping holiday traditions alive throughout San Antonio. Always in people's minds when they think of ballet, they think of the holidays and nutcrackers. They're all by video, so we're not performing to an actual audience, but to a camera and a set of crew and it's it's different you don't get to feed off the energy of the audience and although most performances remain virtual for organizations including the Rotary Club and the San Antonio Museum of Art soon they'll dance outdoors on a stage and in front of a socially distanced crowd at the San Antonio Botanical Garden an opportunity the dancers say they won't ever take for granted. The dancers that can still perform, I think they're even more grateful because now they're dancing not only for themselves, but for the dancers that can't dance right now. So again, those dancers say that it's something that they won't take for granted, but I believe that the community also, it's something that we won't take for granted. As we know, so many events have been canceled, so they've thought of this new way. These two outdoor performances will take place this weekend. So if you have a pen and paper, write this down. It's happening Sunday, December 6th. They have two performances, first at noon and then the other one at 3 p.m. at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. So it's going to be a live outdoor stage for them that they're going to build. And of course, you have the beautiful scenery of the Botanical garden. Mark Steph. Thank you, Alicia. Mark wrote it down. Yeah, this Sunday, this Sunday. All right, Alicia, thank you very much. Sunday, December 6th. And by that time, it'll be a nice sunny afternoon, hopefully. Well, we sure hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie's back with us now and Mountain Cedar reared its ugly head yesterday. What about yeah. today, Katie? Not in the pollen count today. That okay. is some good news, okay. but I think since it showed up yesterday, once we get our next big front through and those winds pick back up, we'll Pow. probably see. Yeah, we'll probably see another appearance of Mountain Cedar. But for today, it is not in the pollen count. I do want to correct myself. I showed you a pollen count earlier and it said low 260. The count today is actually 130. So just wanted to make sure we got the correct pollen count for you to start your Friday off on a good note. Low temperatures today. We did have some spots touch freezing even mid to upper 20s in the hill country. Our low at the airport 33. Our average low this time of year is in the mid 40s. So we were a good almost 10 degrees cooler than that to start the day today. By this afternoon, we'll see temperatures climb into the upper 50s, low 60s. We're going for a high temperature right around 60 here in San Antonio. So while we will see our temperatures jump up, almost 30 degrees from our morning lows. It is going to be staying cool pretty much all day, so you'll want to keep a jacket or a sweater with you um, because we're not going to warm up too much this afternoon. Uh, you see these clouds out on live cam, some high level clouds. We're going to keep a lot of those around through the course of the day today, and it's because of the weather setup we have going into the weekend. We've got some moisture, some cloud cover moving in from the southwest. That's because there is what we call a cutoff low. It's a piece of upper level energy that can produce rain. It ushers in some cloud cover. We've got counterclockwise winds around that low. That's what's ushering that high cloud cover over south Texas today. That upper level low will be approaching our area late tonight into the day tomorrow. We simply don't have enough moisture down near the ground to produce a lot of rain. If we did, we would be talking about rain chances with this low as it moves through. But really all it will do for us tomorrow is bring an increase in cloud cover. However, as it exits to the east on Sunday, skies will clear out and we'll see a lot of sunshine to finish up the weekend. So that's kind of the big picture. We'll take things down a little bit closer to home here again by tomorrow morning. Skies will be mostly cloudy and look a little precip there in the far western portion of our viewing area. Um, that's where there will be a little bit more moisture down closer to the ground to possibly produce some precipitation. I expect most of this to stay well to the west of our area, even well to the west of Rock Springs and certainly farther north uh, of Del Rio there. They could see a little precip out there, but for the rest of us, we're looking at just an increase in cloud cover tomorrow. High near 60 tomorrow afternoon with mostly cloudy skies continuing into the afternoon, but we'll see skies really clear out nicely overnight Saturday into Sunday morning. We'll start you off cold again Sunday with a low near 37, but then bounce back to near into the mid 60s for Sunday afternoon. So a little bit warmer Sunday as compared to Saturday. And again, 
just the big difference this weekend. More clouds tomorrow versus total sunshine on Sunday. Overall, very comfortable both days, even with the cloud cover around tomorrow. High temperature today, 60 degrees overall, staying nice and cool. This evening for our football games, temperatures will drop into the 50s, eventually the upper 40s, but our winds will be light, so it won't be overly chilly, but I think you'll still want a jacket or a sweater if you've got a game to go to this evening. Kind of split forecast this weekend, more clouds tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine and a little bit breezy on Sunday. And really, we don't have any other big weather systems moving in until late next week. So that'll keep us rain free for the next week or so. Guys, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Nice afternoon, though. 921, 41 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a new match.com and that pair Satan with 2020 is going viral. Jeannie Mose looks at how the internet is responding to the commercial. All right, this is not a joke. 924, a new advertisement brings together Ryan Riddles, Taylor Swift, and Satan. Plus, the year 2020 personified as a malicious woman. It's an ad for Match.com, and as CNN's Jeannie Mose explains, it features a match made in hell. Satan has the hots for 2020. They're a match on Match.com, meeting up in Central Park, a bad guy in a bad year. Hi. Two zero, two zero. Please, call me 2020. The web ad is the brainchild of actor Ryan Reynolds and his production studio. So where are you from? Who? Oh. Me too. The devil is in the details from the WTF in the end zone to Satan refusing to enter a church to this smitten couple taking selfies in front of a dumpster fire. And the soundtrack, Taylor Swift let her friend Ryan Reynolds debut the re-recorded version of her old song. After losing her rights to the original, she's redoing some of them. I've been feeling so alone, I keep waiting. When Satan hooks up with 2020, naturally, they steal toilet paper. The web ad is getting rave reviews, diabolically clever. Winner, who gives out awards for commercials because this one fits 2020 perfectly. Ryan Reynolds doesn't play Satan. This guy, Aaron Reed, does, along with Natalie Roy. There's already a sequel. Oh, I've dated much worse guys than him. Much worse. I mean, at least he's famous. Remember when Harry met Sally? Well, this is when Satan met 2020. I started by using the Match custom search filter. I filtered out joy, happiness, toilet paper, and reason. Boom. It was hard not to notice Satan has a 666 pack. I just don't want this year to end. What? Lamented one online dater, Satan got a match and I can't. Hey, not every romance is a match made in heaven. You devil. <laughs> Guilty. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. <laughs> I smell a series. Come on, YouTube or Netflix or somebody. I think so. I mean, if we could do Cobra Kai, we could do this, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think it'll catch on. By the way, earlier this week, we saw a new uh, ornament for 2020, yes. and it's a dumpster fire ornament. So just Google that. You can put that on your tree. Yeah, our uh, photographer, Timmy, has a T-shirt already. Ah, so, yes. yes. It's yeah, we here. Are, we are anxious to put this year in the rear view mirror. Yes, very mm. much so. 927, 41 degrees on a Friday morning. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, an incident at a high school football game in South Texas is going viral. Why? One of the players decided to tackle the referee. And move over Iron Man and Captain America. Marvel showing a different crop of superheroes. Some love and a newly unveiled comic book. David is back with details in your Good News Roundup. The U.S. could start distributing a COVID-19 vaccine in just a few weeks. But how does a vaccine work and how many people have to get it? for it to eventually put an end to the pandemic. Some answers after the break. And welcome back, it's 9:31. FDA Commissioner Dr. Stephen Hahn says the agency is working days, nights, and weekends to evaluate clear multiple COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use authorization before distributing 
to the general public. As ABC's Romina Puga reports, doctors are trying to address the public's questions about the vaccine before it becomes available. Emergency approval for multiple COVID-19 vaccines are just around the corner as states prepare for the complicated rollout process. Operation Warp Speed revealed how it will be distributing the nearly 20 million first doses across the country, shipping in two portions because they require two doses. Half of the allocation will be sent out and then 21 days later for Pfizer and 28 days later for Moderna, we send out the second half of allocations to make sure that we don't overwhelm limited storage capability. Many Americans wondering if there's a difference between the first two vaccines, one saying it's over 90 percent effective, the other 95. Think of a bell-shaped curve, right? When you get towards that upper side, that right side of the curve, there's really not a significant difference between 90 percent and 95 percent. The CDC recommending those initial doses be allocated to health care workers and elderly home care residents. Some parents asking for teachers and children to get vaccinated as soon as possible. But vaccinating the younger population might take longer. In terms of children, they have not yet been part of clinical trials. There are new trials starting up with kids. Also, doctors are saying you'll need the vaccine even if you've recovered from COVID. Right now, the recommendation from the CDC, which I agree with, is that people who've been previously infected uh, and recovered should get the vaccine. We think the immunity from the vaccine will last longer. And as for returning to a life that was more like it was before, before COVID, experts say the majority of Americans need to get vaccinated for the virus to really go away. Even if 30, 40 percent of Americans get it, it'll make a really big difference. But we probably need to get to 70 or 80 percent of people. The FDA will meet next week to decide on the vaccine emergency use authorization. Drug makers say once approved, they can move product right away. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. Outside with live cam, it was chilly this morning, down in the mid-30s here when we were on the early edition of GMSA. Now we're up to a whopping 41 degrees, Katie Blake. Balmy. Yeah. Uh, 41. <laughs> like down at the tropics, huh? I know. <laughs> uh, we've got another probably 20 degrees or so to warm up by this afternoon, but overall staying pretty cool uh, as we wrap up the work and school week today. Out there currently, here's a look at our current readings. So everyone's above freezing now, at least in the metro area. 38 at Stinson, 42 Canyon Lake, 38 up in Kerrville. Again, this afternoon, we'll jump into the low 60s, mostly sunny skies. We've got some high thin clouds that we'll be filtering in throughout the day today. North northeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. By this evening, winds will actually become light, just about 2 to 5 miles per hour. So winds certainly will not be an issue for any of our high school football games. But you will want a jacket if you have a game to go to this evening. Low 50s at kickoff will be in the mid 40s by halftime this evening. Weekend looks pretty good, but one day will feature more sunshine as compared to the other. We'll break down that forecast for you coming up in just a bit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Katie Blake. Right now it's uh, 935 and traffic is looking pretty good. 410 and Jackson Keller. Bizarre incident out at a high school football game last night in Edinburgh. Have you seen this yet? North of McAllen during game it was a uh, far San Juan Alamo. Edinburgh lineman Emmanuel Doron was ejected moments later right there, charges the field and tackles the ref. The official lay motionless on the ground while the player was subdued by the coaching staff and later escorted off the field by police. The referee was evaluated for a concussion by medical personnel at the stadium. Wow, that's actually making national headlines as of today. Mm. Several more high school football games are scheduled for this weekend. RJ Marcus gives us a preview of some of the week's biggest game coverage and college action. Good morning, everybody. We're winding down what's been one of the most unique regular seasons in Texas high school football history. Playoff spots are on the line for our bigger schools, and some of our smaller schools are still going for a state title. One of our big games will feature the Smithson Valley Rangers taking on the Judson Rockets tonight. This game actually had to be postponed after COVID-19 concerns hit the Rockets campus earlier this season. Judson is coming off a rivalry win against Wagner. They are 6-0 in district. Smithson Valley comes into this one at 4 and two in district, the Rangers are always tough. This one kicks off at 7.30 from Rutledge Stadium. 
We got another big game between SAISD rivals, the Lanier Volks and the Brackenridge Eagles. This one will decide the district championship in 13 5A Division 1. This district was split into zones after the start of the season was delayed due to the coronavirus. Look, I like the Volks, but this is Willie Hall's final year at Brack after 37 seasons. It would be a great way for him and the Eagles to end the regular season. This one kicks off from Alamo Stadium at 7.30. Okay, let's take a look at some college action taking place this weekend. It's been, uh, let's just say, an interesting week in Austin. A couple of key players opted out of the rest of the season, including Steel alum Caden Stearns, who is declaring for the NFL draft. I can't wait to see Caden play on Sundays. But what about quarterback Sam Ellinger? Ellinger is a senior, but can come back because of this year's COVID NCAA rules. Ellinger said earlier this week he will play out the regular season and then evaluate his decision. Until then, Ellinger has a chance to break some records. He's only eight touchdowns behind Colt McCoy for most in Texas history. He has two regular season games left, including tomorrow at Kansas State. And what about the Texas A&M Aggies? They are rolling right now. Still ranked fifth in the college football playoff. All right, so here's a quick recap of some more action this weekend. Navarro takes on Wimberley in a big high school football playoff matchup. This is a rematch of an earlier regular season game. The Texans and Panthers also played in the playoffs last year where Wimberley beat Navarro. And speaking of rivalries, it gets no better than the Frontier Bowl. Harlandale takes on McCollum. This game will be at the Alamo Dome this year. So if you're headed out to any of these games, make sure to be safe out there. All right, a quick look ahead at some NFL action. The Houston Texans host the Colts at noon the right there in H-Town. The Texans have won two straight, but Will Fuller has been suspended for the season. And remember, the Cowboys-Ravens game has been pushed back to Tuesday night. So for the latest coverage throughout the weekend, check out KSAT Sports on air and online. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, RJ. 938, 41 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and it's Friday, so why not take a look at some good news trending this week? Our David Sears is back to tell us about the so-called lasagna lady, Santa's mailman, and a group of nurses being turned into superheroes. Nine forty-two, a Virginia woman spreading the love with lasagna, and little boy becomes Santa's mailman. Plus, Marvel turning nurses into superheroes. David Sears is back with a good news round. Give us good news, Mr. Sears. I like, I like the comic book with, with the nurses. Oh, yeah. It's and cool. I like lasagna. And I like the mailman. So this is all good. All good news. And we're all good. And little, and little, little guys, little kids. So we're great. Hey, a lot of different ways to show love these days. Apparently, lasagna is one of them. Who knew? She is known as the lasagna lady. She's leading the layers of love at the Women's Club of Norfolk, also getting help from the Norfolk Fire Department to serve up thousands of cheesy, meaty meals. I'd like to, for everybody in Virginia, or in our community anyways, to have lasagna for the holidays, just to have something warm or some type of centerpiece just for them to conversate, for them to heal, for whatever you know they may need it for. Ooh, there's a lot of cheese and a lot of meat sauce right there. Sam Peavy has actually been cooking up lasagna for 25 years, so this is nothing new to her. <laughs> Doesn't look like she's... It's a lot of work. ...want for experience, does it? She's got, got that, that recipe figured out. down. Yeah. Like that. All right. All right, so now meet Mateo. He is a five-year-old who has a make-a-wish of being a mailman someday. No better way to get started than helping Santa's people get their letters to him. All right, he's already has the Christmas spirit, Santa noticed, so he asked Mateo to help him out. He got his letter to Santa early, asked for a new toy, but in return, part of his gift became like one of his heroes, mailman. Uh, I just like holy to the window and watch him, and he, he just like, he's nice to us. I think something like this is what he really needed. Isn't that cute? Over the last four years, he has been battling leukemia, Mom hoping days like this will help boost his spirits. I'm sure they will. Look at him. He's a busy guy. No, yeah. he would look good walking up to your house and putting some letters in your mailbox, wouldn't he? That's right. Oh, yeah. Like red, red vest and a heart of gold. Yeah. yeah. Love that. He has All a right. lot of energy. <laughs> and speaking of superheroes, this is Michelle Tienan, a superhero in more ways than one. Michelle is a mom to three boys and a nurse to COVID patients and a comic book hero now. Nurses don't always wear a cape, but they are still considered superheroes to those who they are caring for and their families. This is why Marvel is showcasing some of the heroes in a newly unveiled comic book. But why me? Like, I'm not anything special. I kind of just come here. I, I do what I love every day. Um, and 
I try to help my patients, and if that makes me a hero, that makes me a hero. Oh, but she was wrong on one thing. She is special, and so are all those nurses and first responders, all those caretakers who are doing their best. The idea behind the art is to pay tribute to each one of those nurses who have made such a sacrifice emotionally and physically since March. They got to give up their families. Mm -hmm. They got to be careful when they're around their families. I mean, we've seen pictures where, you know, nurses come home and have to hug their kids through the window. Through the glass mm -hmm. window. That's, right. that's not good. So, yes, you are a hero. Yes, they are. Thanks. So are special. Look Very for much. that comic book called Vitals yeah, like True that. Nurse Story. Yeah, that's good stuff, isn't it? Yes, it is. Good. And their kids can, you know, yeah. look at the comics. Hey, this is my mom or my dad. And 25 years from now? Yeah. Look. <laughs> yeah. My it's mom a is a hero. <laughs> yep. Thank you, David. Katie Blake standing by with your forecast right now. It is 945, and it was chilly this morning. Still kind of chilly. Yes, and it's going to stay really cool all even through mm -hmm. the afternoon. We'll get to about 60, but that'll be it for today. I want to keep the good news rolling with a look at our drought monitor, and lately this has been kind of a sore subject because of our lack of rainfall so far this fall. So this was last week's drought monitor updated on the 26th. We had a pocket of exceptional drought west of 35. That's that dark red color there from Uvalde down to west of Catula. But when you factor in the rain we got last weekend, here is the latest drought monitor, that pocket of exceptional drought, which is as bad as it gets as far as drought is concerned. That went away. That is really good news. We are not out of the woods by any means. We've still got extreme drought through a portion of the area, including northern Bear County into Kamau County and a portion of the hill country. So we're not out of the woods, but we did see some improvement from the rain we got last weekend. Elsewhere across Texas, exceptional drought is in place through a wide swath of far west Texas and into a portion of the Panhandle, also into New Mexico there. So the western portion of the state could use a little bit of rain. Unfortunately, through this weekend, we've got a weather maker that will move through Texas, but not a whole lot of moisture to work with. So it's going to result in really low rainfall totals across the Big Bend region. That's an area that really needs some healthy rainfall. But unfortunately, they're looking at less than half an inch of rain over the next couple of days. So here's our setup. We've got an upper level low or a cutoff low spinning there over northern Mexico. That is going to move across Texas this weekend and really again because of the lack of moisture. More than anything, there will be some added cloud cover on Saturday. High temperature of 60 tomorrow under mostly cloudy skies will clear out Saturday night. And by Sunday, a really nice day. Sunny skies and high temperatures in the mid 60s. So a difference in our cloud cover these days this weekend and a slight difference in temperatures overall, though staying pretty cool with low humidity in place. Still pretty cold out there right now. 41 at the airport. I expect we'll see a nice jump here pretty shortly. 39 in Del Rio at this hour. 45 in Carrizo Springs. Our dew points are low. They're in the 20s and 30s, and these numbers are going to stay low over the next several days. So as that upper level low moves in from the west tonight and tomorrow, if we were a bit more muggy, if we had some more moisture in place, that would maybe result in some chances of showers tomorrow, but that will not be the case because we're so dry at the surface because we've got a lot of dry air in place. Now, off closer to San Angelo, the Concho Valley, the far western hill country, there could be a few sprinkles out there tomorrow, but anything that adds up to much or would be beneficial, that is simply not going to fall as this upper level low moves over Texas tomorrow. So we're looking at increased cloud cover, maybe a couple of coastal showers, but for our area, we're going to keep your rain chances at zero this weekend with things clearing out as we get into Sunday. So more clouds tomorrow, but we'll see plenty of sunshine to finish up the weekend on Sunday. As for your day today, mostly clear clear skies. We've got some high thin cirrus clouds moving in ahead of that upper level low, but we'll still see plenty of sunshine. High temperature near 60 north northeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. So we've got that low moving across Texas this weekend. Again, added cloud cover tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine on Sunday and really that's about it as far as any weather makers moving into our part of the state for the next week or so. So that will keep us pretty even keel as far as temperature goes. Uh, we will start to climb into the low 70s by the middle of next week. Still not bad. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Right now it's about 10 till 41 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up today on Kelly and Ryan. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Coming up on live, Aaron Eckhart talks about his latest movie, Wander. Plus toys that will make you merry for live's holiday gift guide. See you soon on live. This Essay Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Jason's Water Systems. Hi, my name is Emily, owner of Jason's Water Systems out of San Antonio, Texas. 
I'm here with my husband, Jack, and my four-year-old daughter, Jada Lynn. And we just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much to all the military families out there keeping us safe, the first responders out there keeping us safe during this time. Thank you so much for the bottom of our hearts. And we just wanted to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. And a ho, ho, ho. Thank you, guys. And if you're looking to do something to cheer up your holiday season while social distancing, we have some fun ideas for you. The AT&T Center is having their Illuminite drive through experience. It costs $35.50 per vehicle, and the Express Pass is $63 per car. Uh, in New Braunfels, you can enjoy more than one and a half million lights at Santa's Ranch. Tickets start at $35, and the season pass is $70. Dollars. There are many more events you can enjoy this season. For a full list, head on over to ksat.com. And today is the last day to help share the shoes. All through November and this week, our KSAT community partners, along with SAPD and Zapatos, have been collecting new shoes of all sizes for toddlers and teenagers in need. The goal was to raise 1,100 pairs of shoes. If you'd like to participate, you have till the end of the day to drop off new shoes at any SAPD substation. Right now on ksatcommunity.com, we have a closer look at this map as well as a link where you can make a monetary donation instead. Our KSAT community partners are also still stuffing stockings for SA youth. You can help spread cheer by donating small toys, arts and crafts, and healthy snacks. Stuff a stocking drive runs through the 18th. You can make a $25 donation online, which will cover the cost of one holiday stocking. Again, more ksatcommunity.com. And let's take a look outside with Trans Guide this morning. Things looking okay there at Zarzamora and 90. Have a good morning on your way to work. All right, and last look at your planning forecast. No big weather swings over the next week. That'll keep our temperatures fairly even keel, but we will warm back into the low 70s, but that won't be until the middle and back half of next week. As for today and this weekend, nice and cool with highs in the low to mid 60s. More clouds tomorrow, but the sun will be back in full force by Sunday. We have a viral video that is making the rounds on social media, and it's absolutely adorable. Yes, and so instead of a man's man cave, this is a toddler's man cave. So take a look at this video. It's pretty cute. See what mom found. What are you doing in here, bud? What? what you have an iPad? What are you doing? Noah, what are you doing, buddy? All right, so yeah, sometimes you got a little creative. That's Noah who lives in New York. He's only two years old, did a little DIY in an empty cabinet with snacks and the iPad and a pillow or blanket. A blanket, yeah. And she's like, am I disturbing your peace? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, you are. Can you close the door? He's owning it, even confirming to mom that, yes, she's disturbing his peace and would like the door closed. But they want everyone to know that this doesn't have a lock on the cabinet and it's well ventilated. He is also never left alone in the basement. Oh, no, <laughs> we, we, we get it. We yeah, understand. Yeah, we relate. It's a nice super, little setup, huh? Yeah, super cute space. I want a little space to hang out in. <laughs> have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, guys.